Hey everybody. I think we got it figured out today. Let's see here. It looks like I have some volume. We had so many technical problems last week and then I uh, was completely worn out uh, from like more than a week of getting up very early. So, um, oops, I got this rolling over here. Um, today I'm looking at, uh, I'm going to be working on some more of the uh, Warhammer Underworlds minis that I was working on two weeks ago. Um, I had hoped, I would think what was going to happen because we actually had Bruno Catala on with a stream for um, uh, Lumen. And actually it's a pretty cool game. It is, um, it is uh, a re-implementation of the system from Trek 12. And so, uh, but it's an area control game. It was cool. Um, hey, I got, I've got this going and it's not, I'm hearing myself. Um, nice. Uh, Kill Team's awesome. Kill Team's great because you can work on small groups. I'm right now working on Warhammer Underworlds. So it's a, um, uh, also a small warband skirmish thing that's great. Uh, it's perfect to get into it and, you know, get into the um, painting and the uh, model making and then the system because you're not dealing with a large army and you're, uh, and all this stuff can be used in the, the, you know, if you buy Kill Team, you can use those units generally uh, in um, Warhammer 40K or 40,000. Um, anyway, uh, I've been working on a bunch of stuff, not any painting in the last week. Uh, we have had such tremendous amount of things to get done. Uh, while we have a break here, because we are going to go uh, in a week, two weeks time, just under two weeks time, to go on the cruise for um, the BGG cruise, which will be fun. Um, we did it, uh, this is the Alaska cruise, we've done it before. Actually, the first cruise we ever took was a BGG cruise, and it was to Alaska. So that ought to be fun, because we actually enjoyed that one a lot. Um, actually, they've all been pretty great. The only one that was challenging was the one where we were racing, um, to, uh, to keep ahead of a hurricane, um, which we did, but it ended up short, you know, I think that was when the uh, Arecibo telescope got hit by that, and then it was, we were supposed to go visit that, um, and then it uh, collapsed. So uh, we, <laughs> that, <laughs> that didn't happen. You know what, I need a drink. Um, but anyway, I'll be right back. Let me cut to the other shot, and then I'll keep talking to you, but um, let me get to the right shot here. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to that. So we've got a lot of stuff going on that'll keep us busy. But um, we, uh, I really been eager to paint. I mean, I always want to paint, but last week I was so tired. I was falling asleep at my desk. I had been working so many hours um, trying to keep, you know, getting up early for, we had filming to do. We did all of our SDJ stuff and we did, um, um, well, we did a bunch of that on a Saturday, a week ago, a little over a week ago, where we had Brian and Tashi in the morning, and then eight of us for the discussion, and then we did the discussion for the, the kids games, and then we did the discussion for the SDJ and the Ken, uh, Kenner Spiel. So that was kind of interesting. We'll see how that, how our guesses go on that. Um, uh, let me think what else is going on. Just super busy. Um, I'm hoping to paint a bunch. I will be painting today, and then I have to leave on time. Excuse me, on time, because we have a dentist appointment. Um, Nikki and I book them together just so it's easier. Of course, mine is an hour later than hers, so I'll be sitting around waiting. Um, but uh, it'll be worth it. I mean, it's good to keep your teeth going. <laughs> Don't want them falling out. Oh boy. Okay, I am drinking. Major Melon, Mountain Dew Zero. Pretty good. Okay, let's see what we got here. So this one was the first one I worked on. Let me zoom in a bit on these. So this was the first one I worked on. I've been, I don't think I've ever painted, I mean, I painted a few orc minis back in the day and I think they were 40K ones, but nothing really serious like basic ones probably when I was getting started to paint. So my skills are definitely a little better. Um, but the goal is to use this, oops, it's not in focus. The goal is to use this, um, to as much as possible, use the um, 
contrast paints. And I have done that. I did use a little bit of the uh, strong tone from Army Painter over here uh, to kind of lower the <laughs> intensity of this green. It was, uh, it's really supposed to be yellow, um, but it was looking like Shrek skin. So I got an orc with Shrek skin armor. But I've got some ideas to, I've already done some edge highlighting, you know, with standard yellow, and I'll probably do a little bit. I actually have um, some opaque uh, or translucent paints. They're really not opaque. Uh, they're slightly opaque. Where are those? They are hidden. Um, I've used this one especially before the um, transparent yellow. I'm going to probably try putting some of that on there to see how it works. The uh, I do have standard yellow that I used on part of this, and I think it was the nitro, which is ancient. It's a this is old, and the, I bought it because it was the makers of the uh, GW paints that were in similar pots, and I think they still may make they may make their pots now uh, their paints now. They were. Um, as I mentioned the last time, they were a French. They went to a French company for a while, which actually the French company was my favorite um, metallic paint. And um, uh, hey, it's Annie! Yay! I, Annie is uh, doing great. It's we haven't we talked to her a couple weeks ago. It's I'm glad that she's on. Um, I'm not as fast as her husband. Her husband is Sebastian, whom I'm always talking about as a great painter. He really is great. Um, but yeah, I bought these because I really like their paints, but I don't know that I got any metallics. Oh, I did. I think I got a few. Uh, hey, there's an orc green, but I'm not using that type of paint right now. I'm pretty sure I got a metallic, but I don't see it. Oh, there's a gold. Is there a silver in here? Yeah, there's a gun metal or chain mail. Ring mail, as they call it. So I don't know. This is, you know, the original, original ones from like more than 20 years ago, I believe. Uh, similar paints. Um, so we'll see how they go. Uh, hey, Politus, thanks for watching. Um, that's great. I mean, you, you know, the audience was there for us during tough times, too. The uh, pandemic really, we started live streaming then. Um, seriously, we had done some before, but just before we actually really started to serious, get serious about it, but it didn't, um, the plans kind of all fell apart. We, I mean, we still streamed, but we didn't have our uh, Dave and Deborah over as much as we were hoping. Um, but we're having a good time. Uh, I'm a very good painter. Um, I know, yeah, Sebastian is fast. He is really, he's such a great painter. But, you know, he's been painting forever. And it's its great. I mean, that's, his persistence of trying to do that regularly is really wonderful. I try to model myself after that, but I get wrapped up in all the other things. And Annie and Sebastian have lots of things to worry about. They've been working on their house, and they have other things happening. But he still makes time to try to paint. His job is crazy. Um, so it's a, it's a good model to follow. So I didn't get very far on this guy. I painted some of the green. I don't remember why I got that going. But this guy looks pretty good. He doesn't, it's, it's almost entirely um, the contrast paints. I did use silver. Um, I used chain mail. Yep. And then I think I might have done a tiny bit of the the silver uh, metal medium that I use is the brightest silver um, and I dry brushed it and then I inked it. So I think I used Nuln Oil. Let's see. I'm pretty sure it's sitting right here. That is not Nuln Oil. <laughs> is that on? That is Nuln Oil. So I did some of that on the metal. I don't use, I, I don't generally use the same uh, paints, um, uh, inks between metallics and paints. Uh, but this is armor. This prob gosh, it's really not staying in focus. This one's armor, so it's like probably it could have been done with the uh, with the null oil instead of the strong tone. Strong tone maybe is more of a skin one, but I thought it might be good because it's yellow, right? So maybe a brown. So what I really want to do is I'm going to actually swap this out. Um, what I really want to do is put a little bit of red into this and see see what we get. Um, not real red, but an orange color. Um, I have this uh, iron and yellow that I use all the time. Um, this is actually, this is one of the few second pots that I'm on. I did spill at least a quarter of it on a paint stream with, you know, on a, um, uh, goodness gracious, Discord with Annie and uh, with uh, Sebastian and his group. Um, and I was like, you know, because I'm painting on my desk uh, in, the, uh, in the house 
and it was not really great uh, space. <laughs> and my desk is not exactly level. It's a, it's a drafting desk. So um, I spilled paint and it was pretty, uh, pretty funny. Um, so I burned through that one a little bit more quickly than others, but generally my paints have lasted a long time. The only two that I've actually had to buy a second bottle of have been that one and um, Basiliconum Gray. Um, Basiliconum Gray also spilled, what more of a spill on that one, and it actually kind of ruined the paint. I have this one here. Somehow it spilled like a bunch of the pigment, so you can see the difference in settled paint. And this is this has still got like half a bottle. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I, I don't know what exactly happened, but I mean, it had been stir, uh, stirred. You know, you have to really stir the heck out of these things to get them to be good. And so I do think the paints, all of them, these uh, speed paints will last you quite a long time. Yeah, the inks, well, yeah, these are, that's the real problem with Annie saying is these are the real problem is they're so thin. I mean, they just spill like instantaneously and they're everywhere. Uh, that is truly, that's what this is all about. You should have one of these um, or something like it. I have a 3D printed one somewhere, uh, a couple 3D printed ones. I gave one to Sebastian. I have two. So printing something like this uh, is pretty good too. It doesn't hold it as tightly, but it's not as easy to knock over uh, for sure. And you know, you have the lid up, which is the worst, right? It's just catches your hand. Uh, it's like a straw in a cup. Um, if you know, you know, yeah. So it's bad. You definitely need something like this to, to make it. I don't know if I stirred that quite enough. Um, I think maybe I did. But uh, you definitely have to be cautious with it. You know, I really love the paints, though. I think they're they're pretty solid. I have not still have not used any of the other brands that are similar to this, the speed paints or the goodness gracious. I can't remember the um, uh, ones from Vallejo. Uh, they look good though. I mean, they're all slightly different. The one speed paints actually are on their second formulation, which is crazy because I think their first one was just last year. But I'm excited to try it out because um, it's a. Uh, they look good, and they their colors. They actually had a red that I really appreciated, and I really wanted it prior to um, GW coming out last summer with. Uh, a bunch of new colors and one of them is a red I mean this is a red that I really like it's not this is a single pigment red so it's not really the same as what I would be getting from um, I think from the GW uh, from the uh, army painter ones but these are great I really I think they're real solid and they do last you a, a long time uh, the only thing other thing that I've gone through a lot of is the contrast medium I uh, left this open uh, for a week and it dried a little bit Maybe it's not quite as thin as it used to be. I don't know. Um, but other one, I think this is my second or third bottle of this. I mean, I use the contrast medium all the time. It is the best way to thin. Um, hey, use the printed. Uh, he's smart. No, <laughs> I, I want him to get a 3D printer. I, I, he, um, uh, he is definitely talented. They were doing, he, uh, he's also into, he's the one that got me um, into, um, uh, Gaslands and I was painting stuff and I went crazy when I got home and did a lot of um, 3D printing of parts. He actually is fantastic about kit bashing. Like he he buys um, eBay auctions for just like collections of beat up um, Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars and then just mods the cra mods the heck out of them they're really great um i i i i did some of that i mean i actually i have some of them here that i started at there and ones that i've been working on here and um we want to do it on the show too it's aaron and i but aaron has been really busy um he actually got a new job so he's even going to be busier i will be lucky if we get to see him a couple times uh, every few months i mean we actually hadn't been able to see him much prior to he was here of course for the uh, SDJ discussion and um, he actually had not played any of the uh, SDJs only the Kenners um, and he was involved on several of those because we did them on game night um, and so it was kind of a bummer because uh, he, I really like his opinion on all that stuff he's he's less of a uh, I mean that's not true he's sort of less of a, p a family gamer but he definitely plays with his family. They go on vacations as a group all the time and get to, they get together 
and um, he's always on the lookout for a cool game that would be fun with the audience. Game night extra for Gaslands. Well, I want to do game night date night. We'll probably do it. It'll be, uh, hey, I need glasses that will let me see up close. Um, here they are. Um, but we really want to do it. It would be fun. I, um, I had fun getting my bottom beat by um, Sebastian when we played. He's really... It was fun. It was fun to see like the strategy. I'm like, oh, you know, I actually saw what he was going to do for something after I'd already set up. I'm like, oh, I get it. He's got it it's figured out. Uh, he has a beautiful terrain for that and everything else. He's very fast at that as well. I wish I was... Uh, I actually haven't done any terrain for a long time. That is one thing I used to do a lot. Uh, I had fun with it, um, but I haven't done it at all in, gee, maybe more than 10 years. I, a friend of mine who I um, haven't seen in ages, was the one that really gonna, the group that got me into that, um, one of them, uh, Alf, was a, is a fantastic painter. I don't know if he's done anything like that. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Uh, he's really a great painter, and I was super, you know, into like learning what he had to, because he knew how to wet blend, and those things are things I'm okay at. I've never been as good as Alf doing that. He is really great. Um, well, I'll tell you, I think a little bit of the orangish here is helping already. Maybe it maybe really needs a little bit of red in there, too. Actual red, once it dries, we'll see. Because it'll, it'll uh, draw down, so it'll get a little bit darker as it uh, dries. Now, I want it to be yellow and not green, so that hopefully, if I put some of this on it, once it dries, we'll see how it goes. Um, there's still lots more to do this one. I just kind of basically got the broad strokes done here a little bit. So let's see. Well, we did play, uh, we did do, we've had two of the SDJ games uh, go live. We've actually had a bunch of them. Iki was one that we did already, and we already did ch uh, Challengers. I keep wanting to call that one Champions. Um, we did Challengers, um, I think last year, around Spiel, because uh, I feel like when we went to Spiel, we were, I told one of the uh, folks at Asbe we had done that video, it was coming out that week or something like that. And then recently we just put out in season two, uh, 11, I was going to say season 2, season 11 we put out um, uh, Planet Unknown, and then last week we just did um, uh, Dorfermanic. We actually had some problems with, man, we had some problems with Dorfermanic. So, Nikki actually caught that the rule, Dave was saying the rule incorrectly, but I don't think it sunk into his head completely, and we had some problems. Now, the first playthrough, I think, was pretty accurate, but the second playthrough, where we had some variables introduced, uh, just did not go that well. And so, I put in, I saw some, I caught some of it and put some of the notes on, but there was, there were a few more instances of it's actually kind of uh, unfortunate. The rules in English are not ideal. Um, it's not, I mean, you know, these things happen, but they are really not great. Like Nikki and I, the one that I actually corrected on screen, which is basically the problem we have with the game. There's two things, one that we didn't, we definitely didn't get wrong, and that is in the beginning of the game, you, the first three tiles you got draw are gonna be um, uh, tasks. Tasks are like you always have to have three tasks active. So when you start the game, you have none. Uh, there's a there. Somebody commented that we did that wrong, and, and I'm like, no, we didn't. Um, I actually don't. I think somebody else commented that we hadn't done it wrong. Uh, but um, the rules are just not great in English, and plenty of people have told us that the German ones are very clear. So it's kind of unfortunate that that's that way. And the other one that we had a problem with uh, that we didn't actually get wrong. So Scott had played it with his group. And he had gotten three things wrong, one of which might have been the thing we ended up ultimately getting wrong, but um, a couple times. Uh, but we got it in the teach correctly because Nikki caught Dave on it. Um, but the one that we kind of messed up a few times was you, when you lay a tile that has a task on it, first of all, it can't, I, I think it can complete. I mean, that we talked to somebody else this weekend about it. Um, you can, if it's like you have a six uh, task, forest and you're laying it down on five to make it six, theoretically you can do that. The issue is if you have, we did it in the video towards the end of the second play, we had this large area of villages and then we had a single 
tile that was a task tile that had a six on it. And we connected it to a bunch. Now, I, as soon as I saw that go down, I was like, what are we doing? And uh, so I started to make the note and then we started to do the research. But gosh, we spent so much time reading those rules. Like it takes, it's several paragraphs to explain what to do. And it's not even that crazy. Vallejo Express, Thunderflux. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I missed that. Uh, yeah, they do evaporate pretty quick. Um, hey, Aldi's on there too. Hey, Scott. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, it's such a great, I, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a light game. You know, there is, the tasks are what make it kind of interesting. Um, I feel, you know, like the challenges to score, you don't have to do well. You can just keep playing. But if you do well, you can advance on the, the tree and the, 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 it's not a tech tree, but it kind of is. Uh, it unlocks things that you can do and um, gives you more tasks. And I don't even know. We, uh, Nikki actually said she spoiled something for herself by trying to figure out that the questions. So that's a bummer. Um, but anyway, so we also have, this week is going to be the three Kinderspiel videos. Um, and then I think we're going to have a cup. Well, you know, it's getting close. The announcement is on Sunday the 16th. And uh, it'll be early on, I don't know if it's like, I think it's 4 or 6 p.m. I think last year it was on a Saturday. So it's interesting it's on a Sunday. Um, and we'll probably put out another video, uh, a, stand, a standard game night. But we'll do the three kids ones. Then... We'll do the standard game night or two. I'm not, I have to look at the schedule. And then we will do the SDJ discussion video plus the two games that we, and the kids discussion, Kinderspiel discussion video at the same time, and the two games we have not done on the show. We've done them on the show. We recorded them, but we haven't, uh, they aren't even edited. Uh, uh, Next Station in London and uh, Fun Facts. So it'll be interesting to see how this all goes because, um, you know, we all had, there was some varying opinions and it was interesting on both. I mean, I'll let you guys, I'm not going to spoil anything. You should watch the video to see what we actually do. But um, it's interesting people's uh, opinions on these. I I think they're good games. I just don't think, my biggest problem probably is, is that we know the games. Um, we didn't necessarily play all of them, but, uh, and that is not the SDJ's issue, but we, um, Usually, it used to be that I would always have these new games that I had heard nothing about. And I think that that, you know, that is over. Now, that's, of course, you know, it's a different market. Germany is a, you know, different f phase of the games. For example, Gigamons, which is a, a Kinderspiel nomination, is seven, or no, nine years old. Uh, I guess it came out seven years after the original one. But it wasn't available in Germany. So that can't be nominated. Um, uh, and there are some, some like that. Let's th let me think. Uh, Iki's older. Uh, Iki had been out in a, a different edition. And then last year or the year before, um, Sorry We Are French redid it. And then Gigamic uh, or Hachette put it out, uh, you know, distributed it uh, to us internationally, uh, in the United States anyway. So that one's actually kind of older too. Uh, but it was old for, you know, I had never played the original one. I wish I, I had that one. The art is really neat on it. Um, but, uh, bad company. Ooh, no kidding. Wow. Nice. I really like that one. Um, it's sad that it took so, I mean, I don't know that it's easily available still. Uh, that is a, a, a Porta Games release that, uh, I think, um, uh, Matigo distributed so you could buy it from Germany or not Germany uh, France, but Not everybody's gonna do that. I mean, I have no problem ordering from Amazon uh, You know Europe Japan um, I go from France Germany UK and J Japan and I have no problem ordering from those but For whatever reason when it's a small I mean, I don't think I've ever ordered anything from even Philibert and Scott is he's smart he does it all the time it's just that i it's just so easy with amazon and i don't love putting my information out there at more places so i i don't know but um that's cool yeah that's the way to do it if you get we we have a one good store there's actually a game cafe that we've never been to that rusty has told us about he actually talked about it again uh we a spoiler we did have rusty on the um the show it was fantastic hadn't seen him for we hadn't seen him for nearly a year and he hasn't been on the show since um 
2019. I mean, we probably had some episodes with him in 2020, but we hadn't had him on the show. We did have him on some of the live streams uh, at the, during uh, 2020, but we hadn't had him actually in the studio and on the show. We had seen him. Rusty had time um, to come visit, but then his mother passed away and he had to help his father and it was just crazy. So it's good. We, it was good to see him. We had him at BGG Con uh, Spring, which was great. Uh, I did not get to spend as much time with him as I'd liked. Um, but uh, it was really good. And hopefully we'll have him on some actual game nights again soon. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting interesting bunch of games. We'll see how they, we'll see how they do. I, um, but yeah, usually I know them. I don't know them. Uh, it's for the last few years I've known some of them and I, there were obviously there were some surprises in the Kinderspiel. I just, I don't keep up with that and I hadn't seen Kristoff as much as I might have. He's actually pretty good about, uh, passing games on to us that he thinks would be good for the show. Uh, Kristoff is the head of the children's jury. Um, and, I liked all three of the kids' games. Um, I, my favorite one is the one that probably won't win, although I would certainly be happy that I... I think I chose it and then changed my mind have, having listened to Tashi. Uh, you know, she's the target audience. But she also made some points that I felt were completely legit. And so... Um, the... Because uh, I think I think Mysterium Kids is really good. Uh, and it's, it's challenging though. I think once kids play it more, I think they would be good. Uh, we actually kind of blew it. We should have played it twice. We were running late because the uh, other folks were coming in. And um, uh, so we only played it once and Tashi only got to give the clues once. And she really should have given them a couple times uh, just so that we could see how she did. I think we misguessed her. Oh, I know what it was. I think it was a match. I can't remember, you know. Anyway, I don't want to spoil it. You should watch it. It's pretty great. But we should have... It was so short, we should have done it twice. Yeah, Rusty, it's so good to ha have him around. We miss him a lot. Um, he's doing much better. But, you know, it's a challenge. Like, losing his mom and then struggling with all the things that had been going on um, after. Because his father has health issues, and so he's been helping, him take, helping take care of him. And... Um, so it's really, his job has been crazy, and then, uh, you know, his his father's health has made it very difficult for him to get stuff done. You know, just focus on himself a little bit. Um, not even, you know, obviously game night's fun if we can have him around, but more importantly, he just needs to focus on his own health. Um, so it was great to see him. We had, uh, the crazy thing is like everybody, so we had everybody there that day, and then most everybody except Candace has been, is going to be gone. Uh, Mike was here, which was great. We hadn't had Mike over for months, months, and months. Um, and uh, we also had Mark Basada over from Board Game Barrage, which is great. We hadn't seen him since maybe was it? I guess it was two years ago. We actually invited him for the SDJ uh, special last year, and both he and Aaron were not feeling good that day, and they were nervous that they might be have COVID. Uh, Aaron did not. I don't know about Mark, whether Mark did or not. I doubt it. But he was just nervous because, you know, it was a group of people all sitting close together. I mean, wait till you see the video. There's eight of us crammed around the table. It is too much. Uh, Nikki and I both bumped the camera a couple of times. I was constantly trying to mix uh, the audio because there's so many voices, and I bumped the cameras. We were very close to the... the there's gear at the one end of the table. That's why Nikki and I sit in those... In those that's why Nikki and I sit in those positions, so we can protect it. Um, uh, but... Uh, the, uh, I, I mean, I'm excited to see what the SDJ stuff is. The camera blinking. I hope we're not having. S I tried to reset it. It seems like it's blinking. Are you guys having troubles with it? Um, let me know if you see something weird in the video because I will reset it. It is blinking here, and it shouldn't be because I reset stuff. But maybe this camera didn't get the the. Uh, Zoom cam didn't get uh, rebooted. The problem is you gotta, you have to have things turn on in a specific order, and I might have had problems with that. I don't know. Anyway, that guy looks neat. So he's getting dry. I'll probably be able to experiment with the, uh, the. Uh, hey, look, there's some like vine there. It's sort of like the Briar Queen or whatever on um, 
from this one here. Where is she? I feel like she's, oh, here she is. This one's actually kind of a mess. I have broken her a bunch of times. It's a very delicate one. You can see right here where there's this, I'll point to it. Uh, it broke and I glued it back up right here. Um, real bummer. I mean, it's a delicate mini and you got to be cautious. I'm a knucklehead. I'm part of my problem is I have it here on the desk so I can look at, you know, show it and look at it occasionally. Um, but something fell on it <laughs> and that is not good. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's got that, the vines all over the place. So I wonder if it's related. I love all the, I love these bases. That's what's really great about Kill Team. I think Kill Team has them, maybe not. Um, uh, I haven't, I, I gotta open up my Kill Team stuff. Um, I've been focusing mostly on these. And then of course the other stuff I've been painting, uh, all the uh, Marvel United, which I love. I want to get back to them for sure. Yeah, okay, good. At least it's not cutting off out of focus yeah it's because it's I gotta give it time it's fast but it's I'm too too speedy um, there we go that's good glad Annie's watching we I miss Annie we saw last saw her in October and we are planning to come back we are gonna go to Spiel at least this year and see how it goes if we can accomplish things that we need to do at that con because it's not cheap to get people there um, and you know we have there's a crate, so that I'm sure it's probably sold out, but there's another cruise that is not a BGG cruise, but it is a BGG related cruise where Jeff is taking, uh, they're doing a cruise across the Atlantic. I do not know the starting point. I would love to do it actually. Uh, I, although I don't know, it's, I think it's a cup, two and a half weeks of travel. That seems like a little bit because they're doing stops and then they're going to go across the Atlantic to, uh, probably New York or New Jersey or something like that. I don't know. Um, and so, uh, it would be fun to do something like that, but, uh, but the cool thing is they're going to have the library. They'll have at least a whole bunch of the library, um, from, that will be coming from Spiel. So that's exciting. Uh, we not, we have not gotten a good flight yet for us and we are going to try to, um, we need to do that. We uh, actually need to do it before we leave. I also need to book, uh, Gen Con. I mean, it's, I'm usually much better than this. Hey! Hey, Paula Deming's joining us. Or Paula Deming's viewers. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm painting, um, I'm painting some, uh, uh, Warhammer Underworld stuff today and probably going to get back to some of the, uh, a few of the Marvel United things. But, um, today's a paint day. I'm actually excited to be doing it. Uh, I've been working on for the last two streams this one and uh, this one here that I started at the end of the last stream. Anyway, I'm showing you that and it's not on camera. There you go. It was this one and this was the one I am still working on, but it was the one I worked on the last stream. Um, but I'm doing all this stuff with uh, contrast paints. Actually, look at this cape. It's kind of cool. This was just um, the, I mean, obviously I airbrush it. All these are, are airbrushed to give you the shading. Uh, I start with a black undercoat and then uh, a gray and then a light uh, coat to give it the, to give it the lighting like that the sun would give you. It's called a zenithal highlight. Um, and I just use the, I think I use the straight, um, goodness, where is it? I've got so many bottles here. Oh, I think I put it away. Um, no, I use the uh, basiliconum gray. Wow, what did I do with them? Oh, they're both over here. So I use the standard, the one that's the good one, not the one that I somehow fouled up when I spilled it. Uh, and I think it looks good. It's not black. And so maybe another coat. I don't feel I put any, I must have put some contrast medium in there to thin it out because I don't want it to be black, black. I actually like using the basilicon gray for leather and things like that. It's a cool, I mean, leather never looks black, black to me. Sometimes it does, but most of the time it is not. It always looks kind of gray. Now, this is not leather, but uh, but whatever this cape is, it could be some sort of hide. I don't know, these orcs are tough. So let's see here. There's chain mail inside underneath his arm. Take care, InfoShark. Um, there's chain mail on the back. I mean, basically what you really should do is do these things and then put the cape on, but I just, for whatever reason, I almost never do that. I've done it a few times, but I'm, I'll tell you what my problem is, is I'm dissatisfied 
with my assembly once it's done. I don't feel, uh, oh yeah, that's right, I used this ink, this croak green, I forgot about that. Um, that I did a wash, it's a shade. Uh, shades are really basically kind of inks. I mean, contrast paints are sort of that too. Um, but I think I put this on the skin to give it, a, to subdue the green a little bit and make it look a little bit more, because um, they're kind of olive. This, this is, if you look at them, here's the photo I'm using as reference. I mean, this is an older set. This is from the very first uh, go at uh, Warhammer Underworld, which I think it was 2018. Um, and it's more olive. And I'm using the orc flesh color from GW. That is this color here. That's null oil. <laughs> I'm using this one here. It's very green. I believe I used this on Hulk when I did the um, uh, Marvel United. Uh, and you know, I did I did do some painting. I did these minis from again from the very first Imperial Assault. Uh, these were um, I dry brushed them. I dry so I painted them black, then dry. I actually hand painted them black. I didn't even airbrush them. Uh, no, this one actually it looks like I did do some spray stuff here. So maybe this isn't what I'm thinking it was. Um, I think I did. I think it was just these. So I was working on uh, Iron Man, and so far I've only done two. Uh, I actually got another box of the main base game. Somebody's asking me why did I do that. Brian, you was asking me, I'm like because I want to try to I want to do them all without an airbrush, because I I feel you can do a great job. Her skin. You know, it's dry brushed. I definitely painted this skin after it was sprayed. Because number one, I didn't quite have the technique down. I put a little bit more paint on the faces with the airbrush before, uh, you know, before I start painting the color on top of it. Um, I may go back and, I haven't actually varnished either of these yet. I may go back and actually do that on her skin. But what I did on Iron Man here is it's, it was black. Then I dry brushed gray and white on this, you know, the repulsor blast uh, overspray or whatever here. And then I did on the mini itself, and you could probably tell, I used metallics as the, the Zenith All highlights. So I still had it black, and then I painted, I believe, gunmetal or chainmail, and then I used uh, the metal medium as sort of the, um, the highlight, uh, the, the, the brightest bright of the sun like beating down on it. And I really like this. I think it looks really amazing. It is, I've learned some techniques. I don't know a lot about dry brushing. I mean, I've used it for years, but I don't know any real true techniques. Until recently I learned that you, there's a uh, ours, Artist Opus, Canadian company I believe, um, does these things called uh, dry palettes. And, um, Dry palettes are a way to, number one, clear your, I, I made this out of like, I have a laser cutter and I used a Catan uh, etched you know, tiles. I just grouped them together on one sheet and then laser cut it. I need to prime this. It's kind of, you can't really see, it's, it's a board. And what they do is generally if you prime it, then you dry brush onto that board. And then number one, you get to see what the level of paint that is left and it keeps moisture in the brush. So when I did this one uh, here, there was a lot of dust um, from the paint uh, all over the place. So it was completely dry. It's amazing that it actually sticks pretty well on the white. Uh, and that was the same here. This was actually worse because um, I didn't do any metallics or anything like that. Uh, I do like the results. I think they look really fantastic. And I believe I came back and dry brushed maybe some white on here, but it sure doesn't look like it. I don't remember. It's funny. I, I'm, the video's up. I should go look at it. Um, but uh, I think that it's worth it. You know, I mean, you get good results and you don't have to uh, spend the money on an airbrush. Now, the one kit I have that I used on the stream recently was this one that I purchased from Amazon. It's like $50. Um, YFU foo. Um, I mean, excuse me. I think it was $60 and I think it goes for $70. It's sometimes on sale for about $60. Um, it comes with an airbrush and a decent little airbrush. It's not the best. Uh, I have this one I use a lot more often when you have the right. Uh, and maybe that's it too on the other one. I haven't used it that much, but this is, 
I've had this one for a little while, but I hadn't used it a lot. Uh, this is as you can get these as little as about 100 and something just for the airbrush, maybe 120. I think I've seen them as little as 106, but I didn't need another one, but I kind of wished I did buy it. Um, but you just, you use that to do your highlighting and it's cheap, right? It's $60 or $70 is not that bad when you consider it's 10 or $15 at least to 20 something for, um, I don't know how much army painters, uh, rattle can paints cost, but, uh, Citadels are expensive and you'll easily cover the cost of that compressor of that, uh, yeah, the compressor and the airbrush, even if you went for a more expensive airbrush on top of that, um, I think this compressor is really great and it's very easy to move around and I can stick it in my pocket. It's rechargeable. Uh, there's a couple different versions out there. One of them has actually replaceable battery packs. So you could have, you could do, I mean, it goes a long time. I think I went an hour at least without it completely draining. I mean, I don't think I've ever completely drained it. So it's worth going for. Um, I think that, uh, you know, and then I actually have these adapters. So I had one on camera before I started. I have this one that's actually a Badger one. It doesn't matter, they're identical, uh, functionally the same. They're different, now, they're different sizes. This is an actual Badger one. It really looks kind of beat up and it's like it's not put together well, but it works um, because it's like bent. And anyway, this is a, a Grex one and they're both good. Um, the nice thing about the Badger one is it's smaller. Um, I definitely don't love having, so I have a quick release thing on here as well. That's what, um, it's a you can control the pressure so that like the there is no control on that little compressor but you can control it with this um, minimum maximum right to, to how much you want air coming out and you need to do that because you want the paint to come out as smooth as possible without speckles I actually that was the problem with these I remember now there was a little bit of speckling on the Han Solo and the Ch uh, Chewbacca um, and I was trying to do them I can't remember I feel like I dry brush this. I know I dry brush this. So maybe I, maybe I did the black and the gray and then put on the white as a dry brush. Um, but whatever this says, this also has what they call a quick release. And so if you have more than one airbrush, which I do have far too many, um, you can quickly change between more than one so that you don't have to worry about cleaning it between coats. So I still, even though it's black, gray and then white, I still clean it between. I mean, I do a, a basic cleaning. A basic cleaning means that you get the paint out of the cup, you put some water in it, you backflow it. So what you, what you do is, what, this is very dangerous because there's no cap, but um, you just lightly hold the cup, uh, prevent the paint from coming out in air and it will bubble back in here and get some of the paint out of the chamber. And so I do that. Um, I say that that's dangerous. I'll show you one here that it's not really dangerous. It's a very pointy little thing but this has a cap so I can put my finger on this it will do the same thing um, and the needle won't poke me but this other one absolutely will poke me because it's I just did it the other day when I was using it when I uh, painted uh, I guess I was working on I was working on these um, and it's just you can see here it's very tiny um, let's see if I can get it to focus but that little sucker hurts and uh, so you definitely don't want to poke yourself um, but yeah, I think that I think that they're pretty great, and there's a lot of options out there, and you can get in for cheap, but you can also just dry brush. Dry brush looks pretty darn good, and it will look amazing on the table. Um, sure, these look different, and yes, the faces are slightly different, but you can also just put some paint on. You know, you can put uh, a grayish, uh, you know, light gray on the face, and then put a couple of dark highlights and. Um, uh, highlights, a uh, dark sh uh, shadows, and leave some of that stuff. You can see, I, I was actually trying to avoid uh, the women, particularly in uh, the Marvel uh, United, from having like five o'clock shadow look. Uh, so that was one reason why I believe I painted that. Let's see here what Electra looks like. She's got a little bit of five o'clock shadow. Now she's Greek, so uh, so maybe she's a little darker skin. I'm I'm Greek as well. I have an olive tone in my skin, so. Um, but yeah, that's, it'll, they'll look fantastic on the table regardless. There's lots of ways to get going. Um, any tips for beginners? Well, I always, one of the things I suggest is use these contrast paints. The one trick that you'll have to get used to is undercoating. Actually, you don't even have to do that. To start it off, you can just paint them white. That's exactly what I did for this one right here. I painted this one white entirely. 
and then I it was my first go at using contrast paints and I just put the paint on I did do some blending and things like that uh, I did the sword here with uh, I don't think I had the uh, administrator apothecary white I think I just used a standard white that I had and then did the what what they call non-metallic metal where I'm wet blending it between them it's not really non-metallic metal because it's not metal um, and this looks great you don't have to do you just use these contrast paints which are not in not inexpensive you can get a better deal with the speed paints and I don't I bet the Viejos are not too terribly expensive either these cost about eight dollars um, but I will tell you they last a long time but if you need a lot of colors it gets expensive uh, army painter has theirs which I don't have any of their this is an army painter paint but it's um, I don't have any of their uh, speed paints um, what was the one somebody told me what the name was express um, so the other ones from Viejo or express uh, but you just you just wash the, the color over it you don't worry about how much you just kind of thickly apply it I mean I want to do control right because I want to do like the little yellow spot in his navel or whatever the heck's going on there and things like that but you just kind of slop it on and then let it dry and settle into the cracks and I did a wet blend here where I started with the dark and then the I think I used the dark the orange and then I used maybe a plague bearer so there's three colors right there right that's a challenge this isn't even done it's close but it's not even done um, and I, I did it four years ago now Oof, almost four years ago crazy um, but uh, it's a it's a quick way to get going and you basically learn shading and things like that that you would might that you can apply to using standard uh, opaque contrast paints not uh, opaque contrast paints, standard opaque paints um, I used to actually do zenithal highlighting to inform me how to shade my opaque paints right so I would look at it and then I would start with the darker color and then go to the lighter color so that would give me uh, a good idea of like how to sh to uh, shade the paints but with the contrast paints you just put it over it and then that dark shadow will peek through and then give you the shade so I mean you, you could see it just sitting here st facing light it looks like there's a shadow uh, bright light from above casting and there's a shadow under his armor on his belly here so it's a very quick way to get started and turn out some great stuff and it will help help you get better as a painter just actually applying first number one getting over the hump of actually getting going and you can have some pretty amazing stuff now this is again another one that I I did a contrast paint on but you don't have to do it I actually have all of these were painted white I think I used a uh, gosh darn it what is it I have it sitting right here I think I used gray sear which is a warm white you know gray it's not really white um, but this stuff is awesome and it, you know it's a very simple way to go you don't even have to buy their undercoat you can so one of the things I use is um, these paints from G, uh, from Badger called um, I have smaller bottles of them here I think um, Steinal Res uh, they are an, they are meant to be a primer they hold pretty well this is a metal primer this is another thing I want to try for some of this stuff um, that's why I bought that one but I buy the white and the black and the gray and then I just do them uh, you can do them with brush I have absolutely painted them all with brush but uh, and I definitely dry brushed with it but uh, the problem with that I feel though is the paint is wetter if you get a standard uh, opaque paint it starts out thick already and when you dry brush you want it to you want the smallest amount of paint on the miniature and then you wipe you start on black and then you just keep building up the highlights by using a, uh, a I use makeup brushes but there are some fantastic dry brushes out there I'm probably gonna try some from either monument hobbies or artist opus they have some standard ones I th think they use the natural hair but these have been working I've had this one you can maybe see in the picture here there's a let's get it to focus there was a little bit of white at the tip it's hard to see this but I, I've cleaned it and it cleans very well you know you really can't you can't soak these you just get it wet and then clean it off again but this one has had a bunch of paint on it too and it hasn't had any problems but I use these to just apply the paint you get the paint on there very lightly then you wipe it off with either on a towel or this board I was talking about here these um, uh, dry dry brush palette or whatever um, and then you get it to where it's it really looks like there's no paint on it and then you start building it up on the miniature over the black 
and you keep building it up, building it up until you get some white highlights that are more like these, where it's brighter on the top than it is on the bottom. This is blade. And, uh, you know, airbrushing's great. It's fast, it's very smooth. Once you get the technique, and you know, this is a very simple technique to get started with, but once you get the technique down, it goes really quickly. But you have to know that you want to paint minis, and so the best way to start is just, just um, dry brush. You know, paint, well, the best way to start is, like I said, just start with a white or a gray undercoat and then add something like these. Uh, these contrast paints, speed paints, express paints. They are good and they are fast and they're not terribly expensive if you go with the uh, Army Painter. I do really love the, the uh, Citadel contrast paints. And as I said, I've now been, this bottle of uh, Wildwood here, which I've used quite a bit of, still has a ton of paint. I painted like, I think I painted, I think there's four in this bit warband. I think I painted eight of them, plus many, many other miniatures. This is like one of my favorite colors, and I still have a ton of paint. They last a long time. Uh, but you may want to go for, I mean, it does not matter what you start with. Either one of them will be great, and you can get really, really fantastic results. Um, let me show you, well, look, I'll show you Daredevil. So this was, he's not even done. Um, I just, did the contra, uh, you know, the shading, and then I put literally just the red on uh, this red here that I showed you a little bit ago, um, the ball red, and it's it's this is rated as this is listed as a contrast paint, but it has a single pigment, so it's not as effective. Uh, it would not be as effective on a straight white miniature. That's why I feel this is the benefit here. The shading here gives it. It looks literally like you know he's got shade from the sun, his, bo his own body is casting a shadow over the, um, his torso and leg here. Um, and so, I mean, the good thing about single pigment paints is you can mix them and they easily, you get predictable results. If you use these other paints, which I still feel I've done plenty of mixing with them, uh, you kind of sometimes don't know exactly what you're getting. Um, and. Uh, I think they look, oh, I was supposed to set something up for Nikki. Goodness gracious, now I'm remembering all the things I need to do. Um, the, uh, but I think that, you know, you can do really great stuff very quickly and get moving on your miniatures. There's so much stuff, um, like we have tons of games with miniatures in them. I mean, for example, I opened these up for the first time and painted some of them. I've had this game for five years or something like that, um, maybe more, and I love painting minis, but I just, I haven't gotten, I'm still getting better and faster, um, but you know, it's, it's a challenge. You gotta, you gotta do some work to get there. Um, let me get some of this green out so I can do that. Um, but yeah, I, I also, there's plenty of videos out there. Um, uh, others, I watch um, Tabletop Minions all the time and uh, Ninjon and some uh, Miniac and a lot of people. Uh, Lila is really good. Um, I don't remember what her channel's called. Um, but they all kind of can help you get started. I, we also have lots of videos uh, on our YouTube channel um, from our paint streams because Scott and I started painting together on our streams in uh, uh, 2020. That was when we basically decided, because you know we have all these uh, Marvel United minis. I mean I have, I have a couple hundred now uh, plus the ones I got in the second set there that I told you I had. Um, and then I've got the new ones coming. So there's gonna be a ton of miniatures from these guys and I want to paint them. I like painting them and they're fun. You know, you can see here, look, here's the difference in scale, right? This is a mini, this is probably even larger than a D&D uh, &D mini. And then you have, I know it's actually larger than a D&D &D mini. Then you have Marvel United, right? It's massive. But that's what I love about painting these. They are large, they're forgiving. You don't have as much struggle. I mean, the skin's okay on here. I. I don't remember what I did. I really, truly wish I remembered. It's only been a couple, about a month and a half ago, maybe. Um, maybe two months. Uh, no, it was May the 4th, so there you go. Uh, almost a month, almost two months, month and a half. Um, and you know, these are pretty great too, scale-wise, right? They're, they've got a lot of, you can get in there, you don't have to be super precise. Uh, so there's lots of options. I do love the Chibi Minis. I think they're fun to paint. Uh, and I love the bright colors and stuff like that. And they would definitely get you to be a better painter, get you started and um, improve your skills. It's gonna be tougher to paint these little guys. 
although it's not too bad um, but uh, it's it's worth it it's really fun especially if you've got just so much gray um, gray minis out there or whatever you know the uh, these Marvel United are actually like blue and I don't know if I have any villains over here I probably do right no more blue uh, here's one no it's blue <laughs> here we go here's some villains there's red um, and they have purple now I don't remember if that's part of I think it was part of this last oh you know what it's X-Men and I have only just done the, the base game of X-Men um, for example here's one I think is this purple or a red I think that's a purple so why would these guys be good anyway these are from uh, Sentinels right this guy actually the reason why he's even out is his arm got broken in shipping so I had to glue it and pin it so I actually showed that on a stream because I don't know how to pin minis to fix stuff or just to put them together like to give them a solid connection um, well let's try the skin I got to put some of the contrast medium on where are we at? hey time roller it's 1126 I got about an hour better get my rear end in gear um, but yeah the best thing is to just get started you know that's really how you can improve obviously is you're just painting you get there um, and I made a mess here um, but yeah, the, the contrast paints are definitely um, a good way to get started. I feel your results are strong enough that you will be satisfied right away and you won't be discouraged by your skills, right? Because um, it's going to take time. I mean, I wish I had, I have some, I need to dig them up. I have the very first models I painted. I, my parents, had, I mentioned it many times, I, they gave me a set of stuff from... Um, from uh, Ravel, I believe, and they were like World War II German troops, which I was never crazy about World War II or anything like that, but it was just, I don't know what the deal was, but they gave them to me and I actually had fun painting them and it got me started. But I actually didn't really start painting figures until about 23 years ago. Um, my friends, when I went away to my grandfather's funeral, um, I came back and they were, <laughs> you know, they, we played um, board games with them Actually, that's not even right. That's right in the middle. We were we started with board games, and then we went to uh, land gaming. And so in the middle of that, we did some land gaming, and uh, they got into uh, GW, uh, Warhammer 40K stuff. Now, they had already been into it when they were younger, and they just had that, you know, urge to go ahead and do it, uh, do some more of that. So I initially, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do that. That's crazy. It's expensive. And that was then. It's so much more expensive now. And uh, they, uh, but I started to look at the miniatures and was really knocked out by them and, and started an army. My friend Alf, who I was talking about earlier, who's a great painter, he was quick to move on to something else. So he had decided he was going to get rid of his, we call them Alf Fire Sale. He was going to get rid of his, um, his uh, Eldar. And so I just, I just bought those and some more new stuff and, and uh, went crazy with it. And I've had, I, I loved it. I just... Uh, I think I basically kind of ran out of steam uh, around the time in 2010, uh, 2009, when I um, got Space Hulk, which I love. Um, and I painted the Marines. Um, and then Scott was saying that he would love to have painted minis for the BG library. So I'm just, I just said, okay, I'll give you mine. We'll get it. They got me another copy of the game. And then we painted the uh, Gene Steelers together. That was really fun. Um, and that was kind of his last time painting anything prior to 2010. He has just as many of the uh, Marvel United as I have. Plus, he has many games with tons of miniatures. miniatures. He likes, he actually likes to buy pre-painted armies if he can get them because, you know, it just means they're going to be done. Um, I really like to paint them. I always can... I mean, certainly I'm not great. I can make mistakes and not do a great job on them as well. But I always feel I can do a better job. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm a decent painter and I love to do it. Let's see here. He's brawny. But I've wanted to paint orcs for a long time. I don't know that I, I think I have a few things that I bought over time um, I really need to look 
I have too many minis though, that is the reality. To my right is just so much stuff. And then games that we have, and I have games in the, I have, I don't, I don't even, I never was even really interested in it, but I have, um, uh, Kingdom Death Monster, I have just tons of games, tons of games with minis, and I really, really need to get through them. Um, we had, Ad Adam was the one that really got me going on the Zenithal highlight for this, when he did, uh, Adam S uh, Smasher from Tabletop Minions. He did for a stream for us during the pandemic where he painted the Warhammer, excuse me, the Marvel United box, a uh, few minis from the box set of the very first uh, release. And he did Hulk, and I was like, wow, okay, that looks great. And so I um, decided to get started doing that. I was very happy with the results. It turns out really, they do look really neat. Um, Gosh dang, there's a lot of torso in there that you don't see. Now, again, you really only need to get what you can see. You don't have to be, you don't have to sweat it too much. Wow, that's bad. Um, the good thing is, is you can, this is not, it, it dries pretty quickly, at least here in Southern California, but you can clean up your mistakes a little bit. Like I'm messing up right here. I'm getting stuff on the armor. Now you probably wouldn't even see it, but I do want to try to clean it up so I can, because the yellow looks weird. Like already as, as it is over the gray, it gets green. And so if it's going over green, it's gonna be really green. And I don't want it to be, I want it to be yellow uh, as much as I can. We'll see what happens here because I'm gonna be painting eight of these total, I believe. And uh, did I put all of them here? Yeah, they're all here. Um, Cause I'm painting Scott's as well. He, um, wow, that looks like real skin. What is going on there? Okay, maybe I did that other one wrong. No, that's pants, I would think. Orc pants, I don't know. But this looks like a leg. I don't know, what about the other leg? Can't really tell. I think I'm gonna make them pants. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think you can get started and do some great work pretty quickly. It, it really, you'll get results that you'll be satisfied with and you'll just get better as you do more. Um, I mean, I don't know, most people seem to have Miniatures uh, games floating around that they uh, haven't painted. I know I do, and it's going to be way more fun to get them to the table with them painted. I, it just it is just ob way 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 more fun. Getting out of focus. Space pants. <laughs> that is the one. Although these guys aren't, they're, they're, it's fantasy, right? I don't, they don't call it fantasy anymore, but it is a kind of fantasy um, theme. Although I feel they kind of all, the lines get blurred. They do look similar between, I mean, they're orcs, right? Uh, between the uh, games. But yeah, I, I was talking about earlier, I was wondering whether the bases in, I don't think they actually are in, uh, in um, Kill Team. The, designs on these bases are amazing in the Warhammer Underworld stuff. And assembly is pretty amazing because they're pre press fit. You don't even have to glue them. You just push them together and they stick. Um, it's really awesome. It's a great way to uh, really get into the hobby if you don't. Now, again, you don't have to, you don't assemble anything in the Marvel United. You can buy the main, the box game for like $20 as low as, I think I paid 14 to, uh, no, did I buy one? I didn't buy one. I, uh, I recommended it to Nick. He bought like several of them that were around 10 or $11, $12, something like that. But you get 10 minis and if you don't have a lot to paint, you can do those. You can start with those and learn how to improve your skills and then go crazy. Okay, let's see here. I need to look at my picture I have. What am I looking at though? I want to see, oh, what he has on his, oh, that's yellow. Interesting, okay. So it has black like this does here on these shoulder pads. And then it's metallic on here. So I'm gonna do some more Basiliconum Gray. 
I can find the right one, I need to put the other one back. So I don't keep confusing myself. Um, pork flesh is good to keep here. Nolan oil is good to keep here. Wow, I do not, it's sitting right here, that's why. Okay, it needs to be very well mixed. Um, one thing I tend to do is I tend to put the color on not uh, intergalactic space pants. I tend to put these on, that's a SNL reference uh, that was with um, Peter Dinklage and Gwen Stefani. That was pretty funny. Uh, SNL skit. Um, I tend to thin the colors down a little bit with the contrast medium. Uh, what that does is it tends to, it keeps the color pretty strong and then I will build it up if I feel it's not d uh, dark enough um, or the color's not bright enough. And it works pretty good. So this is, I use, I'm using, if you hear this buzzing, I'm using a uh, Vortex mixer, which is, this one is like $70 on Amazon. It is, you're, it's meant, it's a scientific thing. You're supposed to be able to uh, mix uh, test tubes on it. It has a little depression where you put the test tube in and you, uh, it'll s stir it up really quickly. I use it for the paints. I had um, many years ago, a friend had a, uh, an actual medical instrument one that was a big heavy sucker. And when I saw these, I was like, oh, that's great. Cause my arm was getting, you know, and my elbow when I was painting a lot uh, would hurt. And so um, I uh, invested in this and it's been great. You don't necessarily need to have one, but you definitely have to shake the contrast paints and the speed paints, all of those up. You need, they mean to be thoroughly mixed. You can get away with a little bit less effort in a standard opaque paint, but you still really should shake them up a lot. And standard opaque paints are thick, so it's even harder to mix. Now the problem with mixing these is uh, the, the pigment, as you can see, it's now gone, but it was white underneath there before. It really takes a bit of effort to get that mixed in. Uh, let's see here, I need the, the te technical medium. I really wished I hadn't left this open. We were actually watching uh, the Wayne's Worlds from 30 years ago, goodness gracious. Actually, it ended more than 30 years ago. I mean, they've done some since then, but uh, the TV from SNL. And uh, they were pretty funny, goofy, but funny. And we watched the movie the other day because we hadn't seen it in a long time. It's silly. So yeah, this is probably a little thin, but I will build it up. You do have to wait though. That's another thing about contrast paints. You can't, you have to wait till, it's kind of like a gel almost until it dries. So I'm not really sure what the chemical makeup is of this stuff. And this is way too thin. I'll probably put a little bit more contrast medium in that one so I don't have to wait so long. Not contrast medium, actual paint. Um, but yeah, you do have to wait because what happens is, is if you paint before it's dry, it will kind of tear the membrane of the paint. And so you, um, you end up getting like little spots. I've actually been, so one of the ways I've been able to fix that when I've done that is I just will put some of the paint on that little, because it's usually like a dot of a, where it's lighter and I will just, soak some of the paint on there and it'll do a good job. The other thing is, is people say you can't, there, it's not easy to repair your mistakes in contrast paints. I don't think that that's necessarily true. If you, it, at a minimum, you just use this gray over it and touch up where you got the color in the wrong spot. When you put the contrast paint over it, you probably won't even notice it. Unless you're doing some large smooth surface, then you might notice something. Um, but it's easy to fix that kind of stuff. It's just, Best to avoid it overall if you can. If you can, don't get any of the paint on the. Um, don't touch the paint until it's uh, dry, but it will. Here it, really, it dries very fast. I mean, still slower than. Um, see, I use the same color, so I probably I really should have made it darker, uh, meaning right next to this cape. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to let it dry. It will dry pretty quickly. It won't dry as fast as regular paints, and I don't know anything about extending. There's a thing called. Um, stuff here I have called retarder that um, this is from golden it 
it uh, extends the dry time. Um, I've used it on standard opaque acrylics. I've never used it on these and I don't, I doubt that it will work. Um, and you may not want it to work, right? It may actually mess with your, um, the effect of the, the contrast paint effect. Now I'm being particular. If you do this right, now the cape should have been the last thing I did. If you do this right, you can you can go pretty quickly. You don't have to be so uh, slow to paint it. But I like to um, I like to <laughs> as I say that I make a mistake. Uh, I like to have that under control so that I can do the um, wow. That really is. T I think I must have put that paint on raw. Uh, you know, like fr uh, unthinned or un uh, no contrast medium. Um, Cool. Yeah, it's going to need more. Well, maybe I'll let it dry and then I'm, I think I'm going to just put the stuff on. It's one shoulder pad on this one. I think this is the War Boss. But yeah, if you work your way out, you can you can organize your work so that it doesn't... Um, you, you're less likely to mess up the colors. So usually I would do the skin first, then do something like this fur, but I was very excited to do the fur. Uh, and I was excited to do the cape. Oh, you can see here, there's a, a bit where it's called coffee staining, um, where it sat on there and it made it pooled a little bit too much and made it a little dark spot. Now, what I usually do is I will just use a little bit of paint to, that's eh, not showing up here, out of, it's out of focus. Uh, it will, it'll soften that effect if you do that. Um, let's see here, I kind of, Put a little bit much on there but it's it's strong so I just want to soften that edge so that it looks intentional <laughs> um, actually we'll probably do a little bit of shading here and just put some so that'll it'll dry pretty quickly so you can see the flesh is near nearly dry um, and then I think I dry brushed this silver I did so I will do the same thing on the axe, so you'll get to see some of that. Dry brushing is great. It's one of the cool dry brushes. Dry brushing and inks or shades um, or these uh, strong tone. These are, they call it washes. They, uh, they, people call them liquid talent. And it kind of is. You can really do a lot with a little bit of effort. Um, and that's why I feel the same with these contrast paints. It is really amazing what you can get done. So now I have this here where I, I have some chain mail. It doesn't look so great as some of this other chain mail. Um, but I will paint, I need to paint that. I can see that I didn't get any on this edge here. Um, so there's, t there's some green there that's not completely dry, but it's gelled up enough that it shouldn't be a problem. But this is almost completely dry here, except maybe where I just touched it from the other side. This has like a hair on it. This is another thing that's a problem with the, these. They really stick out. And, you know, it's not too hard to avoid it, but... Um, see, now I'm having a problem where I told you going too soon, and I am absolutely doing that. It's now... The gelling of it is going to cause some issues. Now, I want it dark, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to put this on. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I maybe should have painted this black. Although I think this one looks good. But you can see it is definitely uh, Basiliconum Gray. It is a kind of almost a brownish black. Um, I do, they do have two different blacks now. They have uh, Black Templar and Black Legion. And they're different, they're slightly different. The Black Legion's the new one, Black Templar's from the first batch. Um, black Templar's great, but it's pretty solid. I use it um, mostly to actually paint the edge of my bases. So for example, I painted this black, and then before, and this is something I learned from uh, Tabletop Minions. Um, you, put, you put the regular uh, matte black paint on, and then you put the uh, contrast paint over it, and it smooths it all out. It actually does a pretty amazing job. Um, and, you know, there's lots you can do to really 
beef this stuff up. Oh wow, those are a bunch of teeth in his bandolier or something like that. Maybe they're just decorations on his armor. So let's get some silver. Pretty sure this is all dry. I use a wet palette. It's actually not completely dry. Um, but because I'm going to actually not dry brush, you generally dry brush the chain mail is a good way to do it. I can't do that because it's gonna, it's so tight. So what I do is I have a small amount of paint and then I just touch the tip of the, the, the brush over the um, chain mail so that it doesn't, it turns it silver, but it doesn't get inside to the, um, the ring, the, the holes in the rings. Um, you can easily, uh, you can see a bunch of it here. Um, you can easily fix that if you do get it in there. You just, notice how the rings just continue here. They're like, they're tubes here because of it has to release from the mold. Um, but uh, you can easily fix that with a wash. If you use the Nuln oil, you can put that kind of heavily over it and it will settle into those, uh, the holes in the rings and then it won't look so, str you won't notice it as um, strongly. But um, I like to do the, I like to do the least amount of that stuff as I possibly can. Although I still think I went over and did a wash over the metal on it here, the ring mail. But hey, it's a bottle of uh, uh, glue. Um, but I don't want to have to overdo it. I mean, if it's a lot of coats of ink, it'll lessen the impact. See, this doesn't look so great right here. Um, it'll lessen the impact of the uh, the ring mail. So let's see here. I don't know how easily this uh, it's mixing. So one thing people do is they use different brushes for uh, metallics, and that's actually a pretty decent idea if you can afford to, to get the brushes. I actually need to buy a bunch of two aughts. Um, this is nitro, so this is when I bought when I bought those paints. So this I've had this brush for 20 years. Um, I won't use that one. I, I have this beat up one, which I wish wasn't so beat up because I really like it. It's a silver line or something like that, silver white. Um, I don't know if I want to use that though, because I don't. You lose control, so I guess I'll use this one here. This is a Winsor Newton one that I have, double that I've been using today. I really should have been using that other one. Um, but yeah, I don't. You, you can do a lot without really expensive brushes. I generally don't use. I have quite a few uh, sable brushes, and I use them, but I'm I'm uh, timid about using them because. First of all, they're expensive and I hate to wear them out quickly. If you are good with your brushes, um, they can be okay. My problem is, is when you're painting minis, you're poking it into little crevices and, and it, it causes the tip to, be, uh, to, um, to uh, curl. And then and you end up getting this. This is, this is me. This is one brush that I, I don't know if you can really see it. Let's see here. It's really, fra it's really frayed out. You know, I, I can't, I've done my, so I have this um, brush cleaner. Um, that if you, when you clean it, it, it definitely gets the paint out. And then if you leave it in the brush, it helps condition the, um, the bristles to get the point back. It's not working on this anymore. This one is, this is basically a dry brush brush now. Um, and I actually probably could get away with using this one. It's really what I should use. You don't, you don't really want the, the, the metal, uh, metallic flakes. I think it's like mica and things like that in the, um, in the metallics is not good for your brushes. Um, it really depends on how much you use them too. I, I, I tend to use them, uh, metallics gets to what I actually say here on what I've been trying to do is paint my stuff so that it, um, so that it, uh, I'm only using the contrast paints. I don't know if you can see this, but it's going on pretty well and it's not too bad. The problem is there's a crazy hair on this brush and it's probably going to get stuff. Well, it's pretty lightly applied so maybe to the brush itself so you can see I'm doing okay here getting it inside there without really making a mess now I painted the cape generally I would do this before painting the cape but I was so eager to paint that cape so I'm gonna try doing I don't really know what to do <laughs> these look like uh, macaroni or something here um, Yeah, I'll put some ink on there and hopefully it'll help. Um, or some of the uh, non oil shade, which is essentially ink. 
I like real inks though. I mean, I have, I actually have some of the Vallejo, although I think they're acrylic inks. I've used like traditional inks, um, but most of them I now have a days, have nowadays are um, acrylic. I have the, I use the, this is actually a great substitute for, um, for, um, instead of using the paint to do the Zenithal highlight, use this. And it's pretty good. I, I like it. I just, it's a little too shiny. So it, my applications of it vary. I don't use it as much as I would like to, but I have such great results with the, um, the Steinle res, uh, res, um, primers that they are, pr it, it's pretty solid. Okay, not so bad. There's some silver in here. But you can see it looks pretty great. You get a really good result. And then just a little bit of shade over that gives you a really neat look. I've always been so excited about the um, chain mail. If, you know, it's one thing I don't do so much when I'm not painting fantasy because um, they don't use it so much on the, the other minis. Oh, there might be some on some of the Space Marines. Although, how does chain mail stop a laser? Well, that brush seemed to be fine. So what I'm going to do is clean it and leave some of that stuff in there. Maybe I can condition it a little bit. I don't know. You can see this, t this bottle of it's almost gone. I have another one. And then I saw the most recent one. So this one is, this was so old, it doesn't have a um, barcode on it. I think I've had this since I was in college, maybe high school. And then, then I got another bottle of it a while back. But this one's old too because the new one's skinnier than this. It isn't really a ton of, you know, there's, it's basically a soap with a little bit of probably some grit that helps clean it out. I actually have some other stuff too from, um, uh, from Monument. They have their, what is it called? It's on here somewhere. Um, but it's a, pr it's a good cleaner too. I've used it a couple times. I just, I, you know, my curiosity uh, outweighs my pocketbook all, pocketbook all the time where I'll be buying stuff to try it out. I don't know where that's at. It should be right here, but I might have tucked it away. Um, let's put that back. Oh, I was going to clean. I'm, I'm using it. But yeah, it's almost out. It's years and years and years of this. I mean, you can get, obviously, if you're really getting busy and you're working all the time, you'll burn through stuff much quicker than I do. But I feel you get pretty good bang for your dollar, bang for your buck. Um, if you uh, get into this, it's not terribly hard to, the only paints I don't recommend so much, I almost only use them for, um, for primer maybe, uh, is like the stuff at Michael's or Joanne. They're only okay. The, the biggest problem with those paints is um, the pigments are very large. So it's very kind of chalky. And you just, I've used them, I think. I did some stuff back in the day, because I mixed it up, I had both. Uh, I end up, my biggest problem was I don't like white. White. My favorite white right now is the Pro Acryl. A lot of people like it. It still has problems, in my opinion. The pigment is definitely chalky. Um, and you, de you have to wait, you have to wait. Um, because if you try to paint over it, it starts to have issues. Um, so this is dry. Wow, that's pretty dark on that side. Let's see if we can get this one dark here. Oh, interesting. There's actually black on the uh, on this symbol here, too. On his, it's holding his. I don't know what it's doing there. I was going to say it. maybe it does hold the cape. Nope, cape's attached to that. So there is some black here. So might as well paint it.
I do have even finer brushes. I have 10, 10 zero, 10 aught. Um, I mean, I almost feel like this is too big as it is already. Really what you should do is use, um, wow, that's too much. Um, you should, um, Use like the larger brush with a very strong point, you know, very solid point. Um, and I'll show you one right here. Uh, and I think this is one I've used. Actually, this is the one I've used the most, and it, it's it's still hanging in there. The nice thing about using a larger brush, this this tip is getting a little tired, but a um, lot more paint is held. If you're going to be doing lots of coverage, yeah, this one's a little tired. Um, but this is an inexpensive brush. These are Royal and Langnickel made in China ones that are okay. Uh, actually, they can be pretty great, but they're cheap. I've got like 144 for $40 or something like that, $45. So you can really do some great work and you don't have to sweat whether you think you're gonna beat them up or anything like that because you're just gonna, you can just replace them. And I, I never throw, it takes a long time for me to throw out a brush. I, I use, it, use them for things like dry brushing and priming. So you really don't, have to burn through stuff too quickly. I'm a little bit more careful from years of using it, but I gotta tell you, it's not, with these new brushes, I don't know what I'm worrying about because you might as well always have a strong, a strong point. That is the number one thing you need. But don't spend too much money on brushes, at least starting out, especially if you're starting out. Um, you don't wanna be too crappy. You definitely need decent, I like these, the ones that are, um, these are as golden Taclon. It's a synthetic bristle. Um, don't use the really low end stuff that have, you want points and you don't want, I mean, there are some even natural hair ones, but I don't know what kind of bristles they're using. Um, but yeah, you want, you want the stuff to be um, as, you know, hold the point, but soft and really solid looking, right? You don't, I've used some of those ones that are, you get kits of like five brushes. I mean, there's some of these too. I, I, there, these, um, actually Royal and Langnickel has some sets like on Amazon too, um, that are pretty good, you know, 15, $20 for a set of brushes that all, will do a good job. Well, I guess I'm gonna try to do some silver here. Let's see what his axe looks like. It kind of looks like it's all metallic, but I will dry brush some of this. I have paint on there, so it should be good. I really, you know, I should just use this. I need to prime it, but let's just see how it does. If it truly keeps it moist, which would be awesome, because I'll tell you, it get, does get dry. So here we go. We first go at this. Wow, you can see really It went off too quickly there. Okay, well, doesn't look like there's any paint on there, which is basically how it is. Let's see if we get anything on here. Well, it's going on there. It's not real strong. Well, if you weren't doing metallic, I would say this is amazing. It actually looks pretty good. And it's not like flicking metallic ah, it was a little wet there it's okay though the <laughs> these uh, implements they use their weapons are all kind of seem crudely put together like that edge is not necessarily that sharp, although it's probably brutal. Wouldn't, wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. The other thing you need to understand when you're painting stuff is you can re, you can start over. Um, it's not that hard to clean miniatures off. 
to just repaint them if you're really unhappy with the results you're getting. Um, but I feel you should just move on, you know, unless it's, oh wow, he's got two axes, I'm not even paying attention. Um, two fist of axe work. Um, it's just, I mean, unless it's truly terrible. So I use this stuff called LA's Totally Awesome, which I had heard about on a YouTube video. Um, it was like a dollar something at um, uh, the dollar store, <laughs> uh, surprisingly. And um, you soak the miniature in it overnight and then the paint just falls off. Now, the issue with it is, well, that is like leaking. You know what, maybe that was what was leaking. I had some, no, this isn't, it does look like it might be leaking though. That could have been it. I had something on something. I was like, what is this stuff? Um, you definitely don't want to tip over. It's, it's on my fingers. That feels like the same stuff. I got it on like part of my gear. I was like, what is this? Still don't know for sure. Um, but then you clean it off. But then when you're done, you must clean it very, very well or the paint will not adhere um, very well. Uh, the paint that you're repainting it with. So, and you can also just, if you're really not too crazy and worried about the detail, you can just repaint it, the, the primer. Now the problem with doing that is, oh awesome, you watched, uh, did you watch, uh, Edwin, did you watch the um, one you're referring to? Is that the Dorfer Manic? Um, the, uh, well, I think I'm getting low on the paint. Um, you can actually just paint it again. Now, the problem with doing that is, you know, like start the primer all over, is you run into um, um, losing detail. Too much paint, you lose the detail. But the paint comes off pretty darn easily, and that totally awesome does a good job of. Uh, giving you a, um, yep, Dorfermanic, good one. Um, so yeah, you wanna keep the detail as sharp as you can. You, some, of the, some minis are just not very detailed to begin with. That looks kinda cool. And I will say, I think that the, the dry brush palette is actually pretty effective. Um, it doesn't feel like I'm complete, and I know exactly what level of paint is in there. Um, I think I'm out of paint though. On the palette, I need some more. Do I have silver from, I do have silver from, I actually like their golds too, uh, the Metallics uh, Pro Aquil. Pro Aquil. I'm using this one, this GW one, which is good but I probably should be trying some of these other ones, but let's just keep going on this. I actually need to get through some of this paint. I'm not really allowing myself to buy any paint until I get some more, um, uh, get, you know, get through some of this stuff. That's one reason why I haven't tried the, uh, I almost did. So our friends, Michael and Christina and um, Aaron were gonna come visit last year and they weren't able to come, but they were gonna pick up because they had it at their local hobby store. They got a great hobby store nearby, I guess. And um, they um, they didn't bring it. I was just, I really just wanted a bottle of the um, red from Army Painters, their sp uh, Speed Paints line. Um, but I've told myself I really got to get through some of this stuff before I acquire any more because I have a lot of paints. I don't use as much acrylic, standard acrylics right now as I used to. But I will, um, I will be probably using some of them. Huh, that's not getting on. Now this is lighter. So one of the problems is I over highlighted this axe, probably trying to get his face with a little bit more uh, light finish. So what will happen is I'll get this on here. I'm going to have to put on quite a bit and then um, ink it have to ink it and I'll ink it differently because I'm looking at the picture they've got like two shades so it's like basically in this case they're using I think Agrax earth shade and Nolan oil on it so the highlight of this part here is um, Agrax earth shade I think and then the body of the axe you know the blade and all that are um, Nolan oil well, it really is barely showing up, right? Because it's it's a white color. 
I do like the palette thingy though. I'm kind of wondering. And, and I think I'm gonna purchase one of the ones from, I just wanted to try one out, like to see if it was really gonna give me what I wanted. Um, I'm gonna buy one of the ones from uh, Artis Opus. Not a lot of stores carry it that I've seen. Maybe it's on Miniature Market, I don't know. I saw some place that had stuff. He's got different ax handles on both of these. Let's see what he does on this ax handle. Hmm. It's much darker on the um, on this blade, so I really kind of got the the highlighting. Now again, I'm just using this as a reference. You don't have to worry about what it is. You can put your best effort into it, make your own decisions on coloring. I generally tend to nowadays, instead of creating my own color scheme, I just go with what photos of it are because I want to just get moving. Especially with Marvel United, I don't have any idea what they really look like. I don't read the comics. Nikki really does. Um, we're not even really, she just reads, she reads that stuff more than I do for sure. Now you could just paint this silver and not do this crazy stuff that I'm doing. Um, and then just use your ink to like make it, um, to make it have the shading that I'm trying to give here with the, the this. I just feel that these are like, I would probably paint, a, uh, I mean I did here, I painted this actually silver and then inked it and stuff like that. But in my opinion, the orcs, they don't have, they're cruder in their foundries, you know, making this, the weapons. So they should be, in my opinion, a little less uniformly uh, colored. Um, let's see, I'm gonna have to clean this here. Um, so as I said, don't, you don't dip it. You put it water, I, that's actually got a little bit more than I would probably put on there normally. Um, and you just keep wiping it until you get the bristles clean. And, and you know, you're considering you're doing it with where it gets to be pretty dry, it actually comes out of there pretty easily. Um, definitely don't soak it because those are not designed to be uh, submerged in water uh, like regular brushes. That looks cool. So again, this is not quite the way I would do that. Duncan at Rhodes Paints yet? Has Esme started? Oh, is that what they're going to do? Is the road, uh, Duncan Rhodes Paints? I would like to try his. Again, I don't need any paints. I'm trying not to buy too much of it, but I would like to try his paints because I know he's a, uh, you know, he's been at, he was at uh, Citadel for a long time, GW. Um, so I'm gonna try to do some of the, eh, I guess it's dry enough to do it. I painted this one first. I did this side first. Let's do this first. It's gotta be dry. Um, I am getting bold here, but generally I wait a little bit uh, let's go. I lifted my palette up, which isn't good. I think that is, yeah, it's dry. Um, so I'm going to use some of the, I believe that this uh, strong tone is um, the Agrax Earthshade equivalent. Uh, Sebastian really likes this one. He's got, got me on it um, before I use GW, because I don't, I use Nolan Oil, but I don't use a lot of GW. Uh, shades. I had never really used them much except a long time ago, which I still have some of those that were really kind of inks. Um, so strong tone, you just kind of slop it on. It's almost too brown. You can't see it.
I also feel like they would have rust and maybe this is kind of like indicative. It makes it sort of look like rust. Hey David, how you doing man? Good to see you. David's over on Twitter, Twitch, excuse me, Twitter. Really not paying, try not to look at all that stuff. It's such a mess now with the social media craziness. And I use Reddit a lot to do research. And um, I, I am a Plex server guy. I have a Plex server set up because I've ripped all of our medium media. And um, it's gone. There, all the it's all behind. It's all private right now. So I don't know if it'll ever come back. It's a bummer because I've actually found lots and solutions for some of my issues, which is very very sad. Uh, but what has happened is a lot of actually uh, Plex has its own forums, although it's not easy to find what I'm looking for, and that's why I end up going to Reddit. Um, but a lot of companies have just let their their own forums go and and let Reddit handle that. And that's, you know, I don't know that I have any, any, I don't know exactly what the situation is as far as, I understand, you know, the with Reddit, the folks are upset about the API because you lose applications that make the using Reddit better for them. I actually just use the Reddit app. Um, but I'm not particular. I am very search for my, what I'm trying to do. And I even just do most of that searching on Google, but sometimes I do it within Reddit and then um, go and look at it. I don't, I'm kind of, I mean, and it, I've had problems. I can't, for example, I have um, 3D Blu-rays and I figured out how to rip them, but I do not know how to get subtitles for strange situations like if you have if it has standard subtitles it'll put them in and they'll be perfectly fine but um, I had something the other day that was doing it did the subtitles wrong it had some standard English instead of just the uh, the uh, whatever language it was um, in, di in addition but then it stopped so I don't know what the story was on it but anyway because um, with 3d you want it to it needs to be dimensional or it's gonna be in one eye right so um, I've not been able to find a really good solution for how to do it. There is definitely ways to do it um, without probably buying too much crazy software. I mean, because, you know, I, when you, if you buy 3D Blu-rays now, you're buying them from Japan. Um, any, of the, any of the Star Wars or the Marvel stuff comes from there. Um, they're not making them here anymore. Or, eh, it's, I mean, there are some. Uh, Avatar... The Way of the Water just got released, or yeah, I think I think it's out or is coming soon, um, and it will be a U.S. Uh, I don't know if it'll be made in the United States, but it will be a U.S. release. But generally, I have to order stuff from either was usually U, uh, the U.K. or Germany or maybe even France, but now mostly I have to order from Japan or eBay. And I was just trying to find all that answer the, those questions about that and it was like there was just not enough nobody you know because it's a real that use is a very very edge case kind of a thing not many people use 3d and um and you know understandably so <laughs> i'm a weirdo this is true okay it's a little sloppy there on that but we'll see what happens when i put some uh kickstart too many paints yeah i mean Goodness, I would love to try some of those ones, Edwin. There's, uh, I keep seeing tons of them and I'm intrigued, but you know, some of them are like basically artist quality paints in tubes and stuff like that. And I would definitely like to see how that works, but I, I feel like I get a pretty good result from this stuff without having to do that. Um, okay, so now the null oil, which is up here. Now, the ones from Strong Tone, you're not supposed to shake too much. I don't know what the story is on the 
GW ones. Well, I did this first. Let's go back over here. So basically what I do is then I put this on to darken up the stuff and then I come back and do another dry brush of the, the silver again to pop the edges out, you know, to be bright again. Because this stuff actually really, both the Nuln Oil and the uh, Strong Tone, or the uh, shades, I'm using Strong Tone as one of the shades. Um, they do a pretty good job of uh, darkening it up a little bit too much sometimes. I had problems with the um, strong tone on the gold um, on these figures here. And you know, it's okay, because what you do is you come back and you put gold on top of it. Um, but it made them look really flat, but now they look super vibrant. You know, you come back, you put some of the gold back on, then you also use a little bit of silver to highlight it on the edges and it makes it look pretty, uh, pretty decent. So here's where we really, I think this really needs it. This is so pale. Oof, try to knock it down. In a holder, for a reason. Out of focus. looks pretty good. It's not quite as grungy looking as it. Now, I haven't done the, the silver edge edges or the dry brushing of it. We'll see how that that helps. But yeah, I feel their axes should be, I mean, maybe there should be blood on them. I don't know. Should be pretty uh, grimy looking. Cool. It's a little wet in there. So a little bit of silver will help. Now I did this other one. Did I come back and actually dry brush this? Of course I just made that, I just wet that brush to clean it so it may be too damp. Although I'll tell you, that's one of the things they were doing on the artist opus. They were um, coming back and damp using a, a blotter to, or some little pad that would moisten the tip of the brushes for the dry brushing. So clearly there's more to it than I think there is and you could probably get away with. I've done it where there's too much moisture for sure. Like I've cleaned the brush and then tried to do something too soon and it was uh, it was too too wet. Um, I didn't do quite the same kind of shading on this one that with the inks or the, the Nuln Oil. It 
That looks pretty good. It looks kind of like it's smashed out of some sub quality metal. Let's see here. Make a mess. That looks cool. And that other stuff is, the color has, um, it still looks pretty orange. So let's just do a little bit of, just a tiny bit of this um, Pro Acryl stuff that I was gonna try on it before we wrap it up for today. Blurring. Oh, you know, I mixed this palette up. I tipped the palette, so that's bad. When you have a wet palette, don't tip it. <laughs> so let's see what this looks like. Now, it's it's pr <laughs> yellow is pretty transparent anyway. Um, so you're not going to get too much of a bump. Yeah, maybe not. Now I need to let it dry. I did use some standard yellow, and that's probably what I should be using. Now, I like it looking modeled, that's for sure. I mean, I don't see... The, their, theirs is not perfect yellow, and they did a lot of, like, mixing some other colors, especially in the where the crevices are. It's looking more yellow already. That's pretty good. I use this uh, translucent yellow from um, Monument Hobbies because it's the Pro Acryl. Um, the yellow that they had, the yellow options were pretty slim in the original go of, and that's out of focus, original go of the stuff from um, Citadel, the contrast paints. It was like two not really good yellows. They were, I'm sure they're probably better than I was giving them credit for, but I also like learned a lot more about how to use them in the time since those came out. Um, Oof, too much. Um, and it did a pretty good job. I actually like the paint a lot, but I don't want to... Boy, it's sticky stuff. It does seem... It kind of brings back the green here, so maybe I'm not as having as much success. It's not dry yet, so... You don't have to, I mean, I'm doing my own thing, right? So I don't have to worry about it too much. David says he likes the color of yellow. It's good yellow, but it's not what I was hoping for. I feel it definitely looks kind of Shrek, but it's cool. I mean, you just, I don't know, you don't worry about it. Also, there doesn't necessarily need to be that much consistency between the, um, the minis, you know, as long as they're similar. That elbow should, oops, that elbow should have some brightness on it.
That looks cool. I need to figure out what to do on the... I mean, it needs to be different. So since this is kind of greenish, I definitely don't want the skin to blend in as much. So if I go to more of an olive, it probably wouldn't be as effective. We'll see here. I probably do a little bit more. Actually, that's already dry there. I think I had some problems with that. So a little bit more yellow there. does seem to be helping. I mean, this is, you know, when you use washes and shades, inks, you build them up. So it, I mean, it depends on how strong it is, but you don't, you tend to glazes, you add it, you build them up on top of the colors to give it the intensity or whatever that you're looking for. Oops, out of focus. Dropping the mini. Should be in the base uh, holder, mini holder. But that's cool. Okay, let's see here. Look at the axe again. Looks good. Maybe a little bit of brown on it just to change it up. I think I got some, somehow got some color down in there. Let's put a little brown in there to So one of the colors I actually really like is the uh, Playberry Green. It's a very yellow. It's actually probably kind of close to this color. Why am I not seeing it here? Playberry Green. <laughs> it might be over here. Nope. Making a mess here. It's a, it's a cool color. It's one of the earliest colors I got, and it's, it's more of a yellow-green, uh, real solid, but I'm not seeing it here. Should be right here. I think. I don't think it would be in the regular greens. Um, I did mess with my um, paint rack here to, uh, I might have put it up here. It is Plague Bear Flesh. It's a weird color, but boy, when it goes on, it's actually, I think that's what I used on, on that one miniature I showed you earlier here. I think that's some of this color here is that plague bearer flesh. Cause it kind of, it's green, but it goes on kind of yellow. Um, I like that one a lot. I will put that, I guess I'll put that over there. I'm always looking for it over here though. Let's see here. What is the other yellow? I feel it goes there. So maybe I put the color in the wrong place. I don't know. Hmm, making a mess. Oh yeah, that's right. So this was the, that's a shade. And that's a skin tone. I probably need to like somehow, oh, you know what? Here's what that is. That's the wrong place. Is that, it is actually under a green. I haven't tried this yellow yet either. It's very brown, but you know, when you thin it out with the contrast paint, you might get a different color. I should try it on something, see how it looks. What time is it? It is 1230. Okay, well, let me switch cameras here. Um, let me see what we've got. If we can raid somebody. Rado's not streaming today. Um, they are streaming on Hey, there's playing board games. I don't know what they're doing, but we're going to try them out. Um, we'll be back on Thursday. Nikki and I will be streaming uh, some gameplay stuff. I'm not certain what we're going to play. She's reviewing some games right now. Um, and then, uh, what else we got going on? Uh, and then we'll be streaming again on Thursday. So I'll be back a week from Thursday um, on an evening stream. If I'm, I should be feeling good. I'm feeling good now. Caught up with my sleep, which I really needed. And um, 
let's see what else is there going so we, we will leave on monday uh the first monday of july so we don't have too many more streams before we're gone but we're only gone for a week and then we'll be back for a few weeks and then we got to go to uh gen con it's already the year is almost over i cannot believe it um but if you can join us on thursday that'd be great uh and um hopefully we'll have some fun i'm looking forward to figuring out what we'll play so we're going to play we're going to raid playing board games say hello to everybody for me if you want to join in click on click on the raid over now if you're on youtube i'm sorry you can't continue with that um we miss you too annie we're going to see you guys soon uh we're unable to raid playing board games at this time i wonder if that's because they're blocking it could be Yep. Hey, guess what? We're not going to be raiding them. I wonder what the deal is. Maybe they need to be friends. That, you know, I mean, I don't blame folks. There's some negative stuff out there. But the gamers seem to be pretty great. Well, I guess I guess we're going to wrap it up here. <laughs> You're going to wrap it up with me. Um, everybody have a great one. Try to have a great week. And uh, hopefully I get to see you guys on Thursday. If not, I'll see you next week, hopefully. Take care, everybody. Um, sorry about the raid ending weirdly here. Or not the raid, the, the, the stream. Uh, talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.